Welcome to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we are gonna cover how to work with APIs in Python. So this is really setting the stage for probably, I would say, the next 10 or 15 videos or really just any kind of video in the sense that we're gonna have to work with an API. But really, we have to understand what an API is and, and how do we think about them? Why were they kind of created in a sense? Because they provide us a new type of framework in order to go and get information from a particular location. So um, a lot of times, you know, if we have data that lives in a database, we can actually make requests over the web in order to get certain information. So that's what this video is gonna be focusing about is more of the concept behind it. So we're not gonna actually do any coding. Um, it's just more of the concept. Why do we have them and why do we use them? Also, if you haven't noticed, I did change color schemes. So going forward, um, anytime you see purple, that will be associated with Python. Green is gonna be VBA. And we go into the other languages. I'll make sure to change the colors for those ones. So let's get started. Okay, so what is an API? Uh, well, API stands for Application Program uh, Interface, and we commonly use APIs to retrieve data from remote websites. So, for example, a lot of the big tech companies, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Reddit, Yelp, uh, I can name probably hundreds, a lot of these major companies offer certain data through their APIs. So if we access their APIs, we can go and make requests to get certain data uh, back from them. And so you'll see that, for example, maybe I want to go and get the businesses around a certain location. Well, I can either use maybe Google, Foursquare, or Yelp, and I can go make a request to get certain information, and that information will be returned back to me. And, and really, we're using an API to make these requests and then get the information back. So uh, kind of to put in, I guess, more formal example, we use an API to make a request to a remote web server. So for example, this server is not physically around us. It's not in our system, it's remote. And we retrieve the data from that remote server as we need it. Um, and then more importantly, uh, APIs provide a a, a standard for accessing a web-based software application or web tool. So again, it's a, it's a standardized framework that we can kind of carry over to many different uh, companies that we can then leverage the data in those companies and access it in a very consistent way. And that's really important because if we can take the same framework and access the data here and there, and really we're not changing that much, it makes it very useful on our end because we can now uh, get different information, but we're not having to change a lot about our code. So when should we use an API? You know, naturally, a lot of people kind of ask, well, if I can just go get like a spreadsheet, for example, of all the data, does it make sense to use an API? And, and really, it, it kind of depends what you're trying to do. So uh, for example, if you're working with data that's just constantly changing, so for example, something like a Twitter feed, uh, to constantly go and like download a spreadsheet with all that data could be very time consuming. And more importantly, most companies aren't gonna wanna do that. And so they're not gonna always have like a spreadsheet ready for you to download that contains all your data. However, with an API, requesting that information can be all automated and it's just simply requesting it every couple minutes and it's a lot easier. So if you're working with data that's constantly changing, you probably should be using an API to do that. Uh, I kind of put an example like Instagram posts as well. So if I want to get comments from Instagram or, you know, photos from Instagram, um, you, you know, I'm probably going to want to use an API because that information is changing just so frequently that it really doesn't make sense to kind of download it all at once. Uh, it just, it really wouldn't work. Also, if we're only looking for a fraction of the data set, an API probably is going to be our best bet. So for example, uh, a company A is probably not going to want you to download all the data on a particular uh, company, but maybe they'll let you to get access to a fraction of that data. So maybe we'll give you access to some of the reviews about a particular restaurant. And so you'll see that with Yelp. So if we want to get a portion of those reviews, we can make a request for that data uh, using an API. So we're not getting access to all the reviews, but we're getting access to a portion of it that we can then request. So we don't have to take the entire data set of probably billions upon billions of reviews and then store it on our system locally. It just doesn't make sense. We really only want a fraction of it because we don't need it. 
And then uh, sometimes we actually want to leverage like computational services. So for example, Google has a lot of APIs that are related to machine learning. So what I can do is I can kind of upload my data set and then leverage their API to do all the calculation on their servers and then get back the results uh, to, to my system. And, and this really comes in handy when we're working with things like machine learning models because Google trains their models on you know, a tremendous amount of data. I mean, we would never have access to the data that they have. And so the, the consequence of that is their machine learning algorithms tend to be much more effective than what we probably could ever build. And they're giving us access to basically uh, input information into their models and then get a pretty solid result back. And so uh, if we want to leverage those services, we're going to be using an API. So that kind of just goes over when we should use an API. So <clears throat> how do you know, how do we think about requesting data from an API? Well, uh, APIs are hosted on web servers. So for example, when you go to, uh, you know, facebook.com in your browser, you're, you're technically making a request to the facebook.com server, which then in returns uh, sends back information to render that web page in your browser. Well, APIs are kind of the same idea. The, the idea behind it is I'm not going to be requesting a web page in this example, but I'm really just requesting data from a server. And then at which point when I make that request, uh, it's going to send back information to me in a standardized format. You know, usually it's JSON and, or XML. I mean, there's many different formats it can come back in, but really those are the two common ones. And I would probably even say JSON is probably the most common. I mean, I've worked with XML a couple times, but I would say predominantly most of the data sets I've been working with have been JSON. And so, uh, you should kind of get used to the standardized format of getting back data and that makes our lives easier because now we have a standardized way of parsing that data. So, uh, you know, that's how we need to think about when we're requesting data from an API. You know, we're sending a request for data and it's going to send back that data in a standardized format. Um, you know, there are different types of requests, uh, but I will say most of the time we're just going to be using a standard GET request. And we use this type of request when we want to retrieve data from a server. However, you'll notice that with a lot of companies, uh, there's a lot of different type of data that we can get. And so if we want to get a certain type of data, then we'll use what we call a different endpoint. And all the endpoint is, is basically saying, hey, what type of data am I trying to access? So for example, Yelp, and I'm going to do a video on Yelp's API, but they have different endpoints that we can access and each of those endpoints returns different types of data. So for example, the businesses endpoint returns information about businesses, whereas the event endpoint returns information about events. So if I want to go and get information about events, I'm going to use the event endpoint. And then if I want to go get information about businesses, I'm going to go use the businesses endpoint. They're still both part of the Yelp API, but they return different types of information. So that's just giving a, a framework of, you know, the types of requests and then really how the request can vary depending on the, in, the endpoint that we're using. Another important thing that we have to understand is m most APIs, you have to authenticate yourself in some form or fashion. So for example, if I want to go and get information from Google, if I want to go get it from Facebook or Yelp, they're going to require that we sign up for their API and then they're going to send us an API key. And with that API key, we're going to send it along with our request because that authenticates ourselves to Google or whatever company we're trying to get information from. So that way they kind of understand, you know, what kind of data are you getting back? And more importantly, are you trying to kind of like abuse a system where you're, you know, making a hundred thousand a hundred thousand requests in five seconds, you know, you're going to put a lot of strain on their servers and that's the last thing they want you to do. So, uh, we're going to have to learn how to get API keys and then incorporate those API keys into our requests when we go and get information. So it is unique. Each API key is unique to a user and we should never share our API keys. So in all of my videos, you will never see my API key. It will be hidden somewhere and you should never be sharing your API keys with anyone else because that's unique to you. That's unique to your account. And sometimes even get an API key, you have to give something like a credit card information because if you start making a ton of requests, they're going to start charging you. And so that's why it's important you don't share it because you get to somebody and you've got a credit card information linked to it. 
all of a sudden your credit card bill is going to go sky high because they're going to start making, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of requests. But you'll also find that a lot of companies are pretty generous with the requests that we can make. I mean, I think it's like Google or something like that. If you sign up with a credit card, you can do like 100,000 requests a day or something like that. I mean, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know when I would need to make 100,000 requests as an individual, but I'm sure as like a company, you probably can blow past that pretty quickly. Uh, something else that we have to kind of think about when we're talking about APIs is naturally, like I said, uh, we're getting kind of access to a bunch of different data. Now, a lot of the times we don't want all the data sent back to us. We want kind of just a filtered version of it. So we pass through parameters in our request to then filter the data before it comes back to us. So for example, I can do things like a Yelp phone search. And if I pass through a parameter that is a phone number, it will return information that is only associated with that phone number. So that, that's important because it's giving us more control as to what data we want sent back to us. And this comes in handy because a lot of times you'll find, like for example, Google used to have it where if you made a request, you would get back, in some cases, I think it was like 30 different attributes. And the reality was I only needed to work with three. And so then I spent a lot of my time parsing information I didn't really need. And so now they have it where if I just pass through a couple different fields, I now only get back that information. And so this is kind of going back to uh, another concept that we'll talk about, but it's uh, called GraphQL. And with a graph database, we can make a query and only get back the information that we are requesting. So that's why parameters are important for, uh, when, for requests and APIs. And then we'll see how to store these parameters in our URLs so that way we can then go and get the information. <coughs> so naturally, when we're making a request, we're using an URL to make that request. And really what we need to do is kind of just break down a URL into its different components. And so, uh, you know, every API is different, but generally, you know, they kind of are laid out in a similar fashion. So for example, this is breaking down one of the Yelp API's URLs. And so really the base URL is just api.yelp. And then sometimes they'll have a version associated with it. So this is version three. Um, they used to have an older one, version two, and then one before that version one. So this is just saying this is version three of the Yelp API. And then I have an endpoint. So in this particular endpoint, I'm looking for businesses that have a certain transaction type. So it's a business search, but it's an endpoint that's related to transactions. So I'm searching based on transactions. So that's the endpoint. And then I have my parameters. And so in this particular example, I have a delivery parameter. Well, you'll find that that's the only parameter we can pass through in this particular endpoint. And then <clears throat> we have some other information that we pass along through it. So for example, the longitude and latitude of our search. We don't want the entire United States or the entire world. We just want a small sliver of it. And so by passing through the latitude and the longitude, we're filtering our information to only return back a certain location. Now, this is a simple example of a URL. Sometimes they can get a little bit more complicated, but when we encounter those situations, we'll handle them as necessary. But generally speaking, this is kind of how we can think about a URL that we're making a request on. And then when we actually get a response back from a request, every time it gets, sends back a response, it will send back a status code. And so the status code just gives us information as to what happened during the request. Did everything go smoothly or did something go wrong? So this kind of gives us direction that, hey, either you're trying to make a bad request, so something's wrong with your request, or no, you're fine, Every, everything's fine. And so I just put down a simple table that co covers the different status codes. Now, there are a little bit more than this, but these are more of the general ones that I would say we work with. Uh, you know, if we get a, a status code 200, that means everything went okay. However, it can go all the way down to 403, which means basically we were trying to access something that was forbidden. Um, or we have an authentication error, which was a 401, um, and, and things along that nature. So these status codes basically just tell us, hey, either something went right or something went wrong. And then based on that set of status code, we can make a decision about that. And then again, some APIs are different. They might have a different status code or something like that. But generally speaking, you know, they all try to follow the same statute. So this is an example where we're just making a, you know, a simple request to 
uh, the Yelp API. And really, I've just kind of broken it into a couple different sections. So the first one, we're obviously importing our modules. In this particular example, I'm doing the request modules and the JSON module. I'm using request because that's going to actually go and request the information that I'm getting. And then the JSON is from when we get back the information, I'm going to have to parse it. And so I want to put it in a JSON format because that's really easy to, to parse them. And then the next components, I'm defining my API key, I'm defining my endpoint, and then really I'm passing along my header, which is basically just now incorporating my, my API key into the URL, but I'm putting it in a dictionary format because when I make my request, I'm gonna pass through all my parameters, my headers, and my endpoint, and it's gonna combine it into the necessary arrangement that it has to be in, so that way, everything's correct when we go and actually make the request. So it will, it will basically build the URL for me. And at this point, I'm just, you know, making the different components of the URL. And then in the next section, I'm defining my parameters. So I'm doing an event search, but I only want to do on the location, San Diego. And again, I'm putting this in a dictionary format. And then I actually make my request. So I say request.get, and then I pass through my endpoint, my parameters, and my headers, and then what it will do is it will build the URL for me and go out and make that request for me. And then I assign that basically the information that comes back to me into a variable called response. And then that's what we're doing next is once we get that response, I want to parse that response. So basically get the information that I need out of it. And so what I do is I take the, uh, the response, I call the JSON object to convert it basically into a, a format that I can work with. And then I parse that, that individual business data JSON object. And so then it's really just a dictionary at that point in Python. And so I'm just accessing certain components of that dictionary through a loop. And then I'm just printing the individual events that were given back to me. And so this will make more sense when we actually do the Yelp API one. But again, I'm just kind of laying the framework of saying, hey, we're making a request and now we've got that response back. Now we're going to parse the response. And so that's really just, you know, all we're doing. So uh, that does it for the video. So if you have any questions about, you know, how to work with APIs or just APIs in general, you know, please make sure to put down those questions in the comments below. So that way, you know, I can help guide you through it because APIs are very popular. You'll use them a ton anytime you're trying to get data from different places. A lot of companies, they love using APIs. And personally, I love APIs because they make my life so much easier. Uh, so yeah, if you have questions, make sure to put them down in the comments below. Also, if you can make sure to like the video so that way, uh, you know, it's kind of easier for people to find or, you know, things like that. You know, we're trying to grow the channel and things like that. So your support does help. And then also, if you could make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release more videos because... You know, we're going to start exploring the different APIs like Facebook, Yelp, Google, and really just understanding how to work with those APIs in a pretty easy fashion definitely helps. So uh, I think those are important videos to kind of work with because they have a lot of information that we can access. So definitely want to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way you see when they come out. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.